Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin. This is Life, Liberty, and Levin with the great John Voigt. Thank you, sir. Mark, great to see you. It's a pleasure to see you. Well, unfortunately, your friend Burt Reynolds passed away. Yes. I remember both you in this unbelievable movie, Deliverance. Mm -hmm. What was he like? What can I say about this passionate fellow, my friend Burt Reynolds? Burt was, uh, you know, he was a dynamo. He was, uh, he was dangerous uh, to me and, and when I was making Deliverance. I was always a little bit afraid if I had to get in the car with him because he was a stuntman, you know. And uh, uh, he always took us right to the edge, you know. And in some way, he lived his life like that a little bit. We, but he was a wonderful guy to be around. He was such a joy. And, uh, you know, he, I'm going to just talk to him a second. Bert, you know, I know you're, uh, you, you were such a wonderful, you're a true artist in every way. You have a, the greatest love for your craft, for your fellow peers. And, uh, you know, you and I had a, a wonderful relationship. We had the greatest times, very good talks. And, uh, and we're going to miss your handsome face around. Uh, and, uh, and I know you're with your buddies. You're with uh, Sammy Davis. You're with uh, Dom DeLuise. You're with all these great guys, Johnny Carson. All your friends are going to meet you. And, uh, you know, I, I keep an eye on all these lovely ladies in heaven, will you? God bless you. Rest in peace, kid. Any story or stories? Oh, yeah. Well, I, Bert was, uh, he, he was a, a scalawag, you know. I, I th we were talking about um, this word, pantheon, you know, the, the gods of our industry. Well, he was one of those guys. And the person and the figure that you put up there is, is the, uh, the bandit, you know. He, no one ever created a character like, quite like that. We all fell in love with the bandit. And he was a lot like that guy. Uh, he was always teasing me. When we were doing deliverance, I'll tell this one little story. We were going into areas that n not a human being had walked for a long time and, you know, getting to our canoes. And sometimes we'd go down cliffs and stuff, you know, and getting there early in the morning, this whole crew. And I remember one day we were going down this cliff face and on a, you know, on a rope, but... 35 feet or something like that and uh, everybody else was coming down they were dropping the the uh, camera down this area and I looked up and then I see four chairs being dropped down for the actors <laughs> so we didn't, so all of this virility went, went out the window you see I mean, they're going to take care of us like Hollywood now we were sitting on rocks and and, and uh, you know stumps and stuff like that by the river with our feet in the water and yet we had these chairs Hollywood was still there mm -hmm. anyway so they put the chairs up no one sat in them except Bert Bert sat in my chair and uh, he sat there and uh, you know a couple of days in a row and it became four. And I, I know, what the heck is he doing sitting? And, and, and I was saying to myself, no, John, what are you upset, upset about? It, every, this chair is for anybody. We're sitting here on rocks. We don't need the chairs, you know. And I went through all this stuff, you know. I couldn't figure out what he was doing. And finally, at, after 10 days, I said to him, Bert, can I ask you a question? And he said, sitting in my chair, he said, why, oh, of course, John. What is it? And I said, you know, we've been here. We don't need anything. We're in the woods. We're having this adventure. And, uh, and yet the chairs come. And you sit in my chair every day. You've done it for 10 days. He said, yeah. I said, why? He said, well, John, it's quite simple. When I sit in your chair, I can see my name on my chair. <laughs> and he was waiting 10 days for me to say that, to bring it up. He had that joke in his pocket. But anyway, he was like, he was like that. He was such a delight. And uh, Did you keep up with him? Yes, we were, we, were, we were close. I, I, I called him, you know, every, every month or so. Let me ask you a question. I don't know if people know this. I think many do. Mm -hmm. But I've noticed you have quite an affinity towards the state of Israel. It's almost central yeah. to your life. Why is that? 
Well, this began, this, this story has a beginning. My father was a golf prof professional in Scarsdale, New York. He had three boys. We were one year apart. The reason why he had this job at Sunningdale Country Club was because these Jewish people, it was a Jewish club, German Jews, they came to this country, wanted to play golf, wanted to join one of the clubs, and w weren't allowed in the clubs. So, uh, so, you know, they didn't complain. They went around raising the money to buy land, and they built the club. And because of their ingenuity and because of their flexibility and vision, my dad had this job. So I knew at a very early age the insanity of uh, anti-Semitism. I remember when I, in the 40s, I was born in 1938, in the 40s, I remember seeing a Life magazine picture of a little boy behind barbed wire. And I, I identified with that boy. I said, that could be me. What are they doing to these people? And for oh, that stayed with me all my life. So I've felt a real responsibility in a certain sense to stand up against anti-Semitism, right? And in that journey, I've gotten very close to the Jewish people. Now, there's another aspect to it, and that is my father. My father was a very poor boy. He was uh, eight years old when he caddied at this country club. And uh, he was a very cute kid. He had white blonde hair. They used to call him Whitey. And uh, he, he would tell the story on himself. He, he, was, he was a charming man, my dad, and had a great sense of humor. And, he, and he'd tell us the story. He said, uh, you know, how he would caddy at eight years old. He was making more money than his dad was, taking care of his family. Uh, and uh, three, three siblings. And uh, at the 16th hole, he would say, you know, he, would, and he, would, he had this wonderful way of... <laughs> he was a good actor, my dad, in some ways, although if you put a camera on him, he, 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 went, uh, he, he became nervous and did other things, but he had this way of being, you know. And he said, the 16th hole, this little boy would say, you know, it's my birthday today. <laughs> oh, Whitey, is it? And they would reach in their pocket at the end of the day and give him a little extra money. And this was important to him, you know. And one day he said that, it's my birthday today, and the man said to him, Whitey, wasn't your birthday three weeks ago? So he was caught, see. But, uh, but they didn't care. There's, they understood what he was doing, and even admired his, his chutzpah for a little kid, you know. And, uh, and they, they kind of embraced this young man, and they taught him many things. My father, this happened later on in my life, I realized that my father had been, uh, when he was instructing somebody else, I found out some of the things that he was given as instruction by these memberships, eh? by this membership of the club. He, they would give him words to say at the beginning of the day. Here's three words, Whitey. And at the end of the day, I want you to come back and put them in a sentence or something like that, right? Just improving his, his uh, vocabulary. How old was he when he started? Well, nine, ten, eight, nine, nine ten, eleven, you know, all the way up. And uh, he, he was fastened to this club. They taught him how to uh, behave at the table different things, manners, and things like that, you know. As I realized, as, as I got older, I said, hmm, that's pretty interesting. And it, uh, it occurred to me when I was 14, I had a kind of an epiphany. My father, who, as I have said, he's, he was an extraordinary fellow, very charming man, very poised, full of fun, loved children, was a great father, great storyteller. And... Uh, very principled guy, too. Very st strong m morals, you know. But not, never rigid. Playful, but strong when he needed to be. Everybody admired this guy. And when he was 16, this membership made him a pro at the club, one of the pros. When he was 18, they made him the head pro of, of Sunningdale Country Club. 
a position which he's held till his passing when he was 63 years old. And it occurred to me when I was 14, I said, you know something? I compared him to his siblings, two sisters and a brother. They were nothing like him. Uh, he was so superior in every way, not to demean them, they were very nice people. But they just didn't have the same qualities he had and the grace that he had. And I said to myself, you know something? My dad was raised in the Jewish culture. That's who he is. So, and this has stuck with you. Oh, it's very moving when I talk about it. Yeah. And, uh, and so this idea, uh, you know, it, it stayed with me. And my friends have been uh, extraordinary Jewish people all through my life. But I, and, and then I went through a crisis at a certain time in my life, and I was looking at all religions. I was raised Catholic, and I have a great regard for the Catholic Church. And uh, what, what it gave me and the teachings that, uh, and the schools that they have today are very good. They're on another level than the public schools. And, uh, you know, the hospitals and all of this. And the, and the great people, you know, John Paul II, uh, whose part I played at one point, and, and Mother Teresa is one of my heroes. So I have great regard for the Catholic Church. But I, I, I did a lot of investigating of all religions, and I came to understand much of the Jewish history. There's a wonderful book by Paul Johnson, uh, History of the Jews. It's a great book, folks. Great and and, and you, Paul you Johnson's a great man. Eyes. What's that? You have tears in your eyes. Well, the, the, I, think, I, I think righteousness uh, brings emotion out of me. Uh, I, th I think people who, have, uh, who seek truth uh, are those who I would, um, uh, you know, seek to follow. I hope, hope I, I, I'm thought of one of those at the end of my days. But uh, anyway, there's so many great people. And, and, uh, and so I've looked at this history of the Jewish people. And at one point I said, the greatest wonder of the world is Jewish literature. With all the different, you know, the, the rabbis, the great Einsteins of the Jewish people uh, across the years were rabbis. They made commentary on this Bible that they had. We have just coming up almost at the present time with the Hasidic people when there was a need for something else in the Jewish world. When people were, uh, the people in Europe, this part of Central Europe, were, um, were bereft of, uh, of the ability to, to read all this literature, then this fellow came along called the Baal Shem Tov and he taught them songs. He said, you, you, you simply need to be you know, happy in your work follow this, follow this, behave in a certain way, and here's some songs to remind you of, of the truths of things. And, and uh, So right up to the present. And that's why I came to the, the Jewish, the Baal Shem Tov began a legacy that wound up in my backyard in, in, in California, uh, the Chabad, and, the, and, and I made friends with these, with these fellows, and they're a fun group, really lots of fun. And, and they help people. And I danced on their telethon, danced mm -hmm. the Hasidic dance with the Hasidic And it became quite a deal. So anyway, I've, that's, that's my story with the, my affection well, for the Jewish Well, it's very fascinating. People. And it explains why you go to Israel, why you do what you do. And when we come back, John Voigt, I want to ask you another question. You used to be a liberal. How did you become did a little... You, oh, yeah. find I, that out? I found that out. <laughs> and then you became a conservative. Yes. I want to know how you became one and then how you became another. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, each week you can watch me on Levin TV most of the week. Go to CRTV.com slash Mark and sign up and join us. CRTV.com slash Mark. Or give us a call at 844-LEVIN-TV, 844-LEVIN-TV.